Hello and welcome and thank you for joining me. Today we're going to talk about some of my top winter 22 features and I will not be talking a lot about flow features because I've already covered those in a different video so please check that out if you're interested in flow features there are some really awesome uh, enhancements with flow so please check it out. Alright so for this video we're going to focus on some of the topics that I feel like will be really useful to know and also based on use cases that I've seen so far. So the first feature I'm really excited about is restriction rules and this is more with security and sharing of the records in org. So let me first explain what restriction rules are and how can you use it. So I'll also share this documentation with you. It's really insightful um, and read through this real quick. So if you are already familiar with org wide defaults and sharing rules, you know that sharing rules are used to open up access to records. So maybe your account is private. You open up access, give, give access to other accounts to people. But then because now the users have access to account, they also get access to different other records that you may not want to give them access to. For example, if a person has access to account, they get access to the task as well um, because they can see the accounts. So restriction rules, that's where it's really helpful to use this because what it implies is it subtracts from the sharing mechanism. So even if they have access to task from some other way, you can apply restriction rules on task object, which is activity, to prevent them from seeing certain task. And this is really a good use case for restriction rule because if you, especially if you're working with finance or, or health client, uh, or even just sales where people are competitive and not necessarily everybody wants to show their activities to everybody else, this can really come in handy. And that's the example Salesforce actually gives here to um, use these and this is only applicable for contract task events and custom objects where you can apply these sharing rules obviously you want to start with private so if your org is already public then there is no use for restriction rules if it is private then um, you can start applying this and definitely check it out um, and maybe you already have a use case to apply this for and the way you will actually find it is by going to task object right now I'm only able to see this on task and contract I am not able to see on custom objects, but that could just be my org. And I'm also getting this weird error. Um, previously, it was only accessible through tooling API, but now you can actually access it through this UI. And I get this error, I just exit out of this, but create it anyway. Um, restrict tasks. So the users will only be able to see if it meets their criteria. So I'm just gonna say active and maybe for this example, I'll just say active. And it does look like it's grayed out, but you can still choose it. Go to true. And this is not a valid use case, but some user criteria and the records criteria, you can use it here as well. Um, so maybe you want to restrict them from certain accounts tasks. Maybe those are really um, private accounts that you don't want them to see tasks for, or maybe VIP accounts. There was a requirement for me where there were VIP patients where you don't want people to see what activities they are going through. So you can always go to account ID and make pick a field from that account called VIP account and then hide anything that's under that. So pretty cool feature. Um, definitely try it out and let me know how it goes for restriction rules. Now the next feature is also around the security where you can now search, set up the permission set uh, expiration date. So before you actually do that, you need to go to user management settings and setup. So you can go to user management settings and I'll tell you a use case for this as well. I have to set this as enabled and this is in beta. So permission set group assignments with expiration dates. So where do you need this? If you are following uh, the recommended approach where keeping your profile really lean and using permission sets to give access to different uh, users based on what they need, so let's say if you have a really super admin permission set, maybe for data migration purposes or some scenario, you want to give a certain group of users access to the entire org database. And maybe there are consultants performing data migrations for you. Um, so you can actually define their expiration date so you don't have to remind yourself to remove that permission set, so which is a really cool feature and saves a lot of time. So. Once you have that enabled, and if you go to permission set, um, and then just go to any permission set, you'll actually see you'll have a new option called manage permission assignment expiration. So you can just say, okay, for this person, 
I want to expire this license or permission set for like a specific date. You can also do a custom date, 60 days, whatever. Um, and that saves you just a lot of time to go back and remind yourself and potentially forget removing that permission set that you pro provided them with. And this also works for permission set groups. Next feature is somewhat simpler, which is using rich text. Now you can show embedded images on Lightning App Builder. So I'm here on the App Builder and you can just go to rich text and drag and drop and you're able to just paste an image here. So I'm just going to paste a random image and there we go. We have image. What I didn't see is like an image um, kind of icon, something like this is what I was expecting, but I didn't see that here. But I was able to copy and paste an image on the rich text before you would have to use a custom component to do this. So that's pretty cool. All right. So next feature is also around the Lightning App Builder, which is page analysis. So it will tell you right here uh, what's your performance like both in desktop and mobile. It says moderate and it will also give you different breakdown, which component is taking the longest time. So that's why you have to be really careful while putting a lot of related lists on your page uh, because they do take a lot of time to load. So this is a good uh, breakdown so you can keep make sure your page actually load faster um, and there are other different metrics as well to look at here all right so let's move on to the next feature next feature I want to talk about is flow orchestration so the word itself means that it helps you orchestrate all your flows together in a better way uh, with no code and only clicks so uh, and this is the first time I'm trying this out so I'm Definitely interested in your feedback on if you have a different use cases that you want me to make videos on about flow orchestration. But here we are just going to keep it simple. So once you create new flow, not on the core feature but all plus templates, here you'll see there is an option for flow orchestrator and this is in beta. So you can either do a auto launched or record triggered. I'll pick record triggered flow. And what it lets you do is actually connect different flows together. It's not a place to create flows. So this, even though it looks like a flow builder and it is that same canvas, but imagine that you have all your flows already created for different scenarios. So here's a use case. Um, for example, on the account creation, you wanted different things to happen within your business. So maybe when the accounts get created, it is just created you want to send an email to data team to verify the account, right? So they verify the account and then they validate it. So they flag the account as validated. So that will trigger some other flow in your use case. Maybe after the validation, an email sends out to the account owner. Okay, your account is validated, you can proceed. Now, when the account owner is now working on the account, based on different scenarios, you may want to create auto create opportunities on that account and then after the opportunities are created you want certain other things to happen maybe task assigned or reach out to the customer whatever it might be so as you can see your business process can be really complex or really simple so if it is really complex you probably already have those flows created for that scenarios but now you're putting them together so you can come to one place and kind of um, orchestrate <laughs> the flows together so if you are here you can create new flows and then it will ask you what object you want to fire this on. I'm just gonna say count, keeping it simple, record is created, and then save this one. Test flow orchestrator account. Save this. And then to come out of this, it's very interesting because I have to click this and then it brings me to the canvas. Um, so, so we're now starting and then when you click plus you'll see that there are only two options for now stage and decision so let's say if I create click on stage that means um, let's say initially my stage is account creation and I may have to change this stage uh, initially I picked only on creation but I may have to change that on create and update so let's say that's my stage, first stage is account creation. And then you can have set exit condition uh, when all steps have been marked complete or specified evaluation flow returns to. So even here you can actually set different flow based on what happens in that flow. Like maybe there's a different flow that you want to run in this, in, in this first stage 
and based on the requirement from that other flow and here you can only choose record triggered flow in this scenario because it's a evaluation and then you can enter record IDs input values and whatever coming out of that flow so you can get really granular here um, if I just pick the first option I can just say when all steps have been marked complete the stage is marked as complete now what are the stays steps so you can add steps so this is the first stage I can add step here so maybe I want to say a background step or an interactive step so interactive step would be like a screen flow maybe if after the account is created somebody completed a bunch of steps in that account so if I just click on interactive step it will give me options to select only um, screen flows I cannot select auto launch flow here so clone opportunity that's a screen flow I have in my org and here you can say okay um, these are the requirements and that's after this is done then exit this criteria or exit this step so we are still all under the same one single step you can add multiple steps here um, you can add a background step if you like so all these things you can do in, under a stage okay so once you do all that you have other options so you can also have decision maybe you want to go to a different flow after that so it is similar to what you are already familiar with in decision so you can do things like adding more decisions to go to different flows as well so this is a really awesome feature and I cannot wait to try more um, but this is just an introduction to get you to think about your business use case because you know your business best um, I'll be happy to help if you have more use cases that you want to send me um, send to my email or comment below Hope this was helpful introduction and there are other small features I highly recommend you to check out the release notes because um, based on what features you are interested in you can go in and um, go to different like maybe you are interested in health cloud or other different features within Salesforce so highly recommend checking that out as well thank you so much for watching